When the U.S. Navy quietly signs the paperwork to accept a new fast attack submarine, it rarely makes front page news. No flyover, no fireworks, just a handover ceremony in Groton, Connecticut, and a hull number that most people will never remember. But if you want to understand where maritime power is actually decided in 2026, you should care about moments exactly like this one. The delivery of the future USS Idaho SSN 799, a Virginia-class attack submarine that has now moved from the shipbuilder's world into Navy custody after the transfer on December 15th. Because beneath the surface, literally and strategically, this is not just another submarine, it is a data point in a bigger contest about tempo, industrial endurance, and who controls the oceans when satellites are blinded, drones are jammed, and surface fleets become targets the moment they're detected. USS Idaho is the 26th Virginia-class submarine built under the long-running partnership between General Dynamics Electric Boat and HII's Newport News Shipbuilding. That number matters. It tells us the program is not an experiment. It is the backbone of America's undersea force. And yet the context around it matters even more. Idaho is the second Virginia-class boat handed over in 2025, and it belongs to Block 4, a configuration specifically engineered to solve one of the least glamorous but most decisive problems in naval warfare, maintenance time. People tend to imagine submarines as predators that live permanently in the deep, always ready, always hunting. The reality is far more bureaucratic and far more brutal. Submarines spend huge portions of their lives in shipyards waiting for maintenance, waiting for parts, waiting for dock space, waiting for skilled labor. So the question isn't simply how capable is the submarine, it's how many days per year is it actually available to fight. Block 4 is designed to reduce life cycle maintenance periods and increase operational availability compared with earlier variants. In other words, it's not just about making the submarine sharper, it's about making it show up more often. In a world where the Indo-Pacific is vast, where choke points are distant, and where patrol areas are measured in thousands of miles, availability is power. A submarine that's theoretically excellent but trapped in a maintenance queue is not deterrence. It's a promise you can't cash. So when the Navy highlights reduced maintenance and increased availability, that's not marketing fluff. It's an admission of where the bottleneck has been, and a signal of what the Navy thinks it must fix to keep pace with strategic demand. Now, look at what happens next. Delivery is not commissioning. Idaho and its crew still have to move through post-delivery test trials and crew certification before the Navy expects to commission the boat in the spring. This gap is important because it shows the transition from built to ready. A modern submarine is not a weapon you simply turn on. It's a system of systems, sensors, quieting technologies, combat systems, communications, software baselines, and the human element, the crew that must trust the boat and be trusted by it. And in the undersea domain, competence isn't a nice to have. A mistake is not a mission kill. A mistake is a dead submarine. So what does Idaho actually add once commissioned? The Navy describes it as a multi-mission attack submarine, and that phrase is doing heavy lifting. Anti-submarine warfare, anti-surface warfare, intelligence collection, support to special operations forces. These aren't separate job descriptions so much as different faces of the same strategic role. The Virginia class is designed to be stealthy, sensor-rich, and flexible in payload and special warfare capabilities. That flexibility is what makes fast attack submarines so valuable in the kind of conflicts planners worry about today. If you're trying to track adversary submarines without revealing your own presence, you need quiet platforms with advanced sensors. If you're trying to threaten surface ships without risking your own surface fleet, you need underwater launch options. If you're trying to create uncertainty, force an adversary to defend everywhere at once, you need platforms that can appear anywhere and be tasked with almost anything. And that brings us to the real strategic angle. Why the United States keeps investing in the Virginia class at scale, even while juggling other massive priorities. Undersea warfare is one of the few domains where the United States still holds a decisive qualitative advantage, but it's also the domain where competition is rising fastest. Russia has made submarine operations central to its naval posture, not because it can outbuild the U.S. in surface combatants, but because submarines offer asymmetric leverage. China, meanwhile, is expanding its maritime power with a broader industrial base and a clear strategic focus on denying access around the first island chain and beyond. In that environment, submarines become both shield and spear. They protect carriers and logistics by hunting enemy submarines, and they threaten enemy fleets and infrastructure by forcing them to assume a submarine is always present, even when it isn't. But here's the uncomfortable question. Is the delivery of Idaho evidence of momentum or evidence of strain? The Navy and industry will understandably frame each handover as progress. 
Captain Mike Hollenbach, the Virginia-class submarine program manager, emphasized the combined effort of shipbuilders, industry partners, and Navy personnel, calling Idaho the product of hard work and tenacity and tying it to maritime superiority. That's a confident message, and it's meant to be. Yet the fact that tenacity is part of the sales pitch also hints at the underlying reality. Submarine production is hard, labor-intensive, and sensitive to disruptions. It depends on specialized suppliers, trained welders, quality assurance that cannot be rushed, and shipyard capacity that is already under pressure. Even if you never mention a single headline about shipbuilding delays, you can still read between the lines. Building submarines at the pace strategy demands is not automatic. It is an industrial campaign. This is where Block 4's focus on reduced maintenance becomes even more strategically clever. If you can't instantly double production, you look for ways to squeeze more operational presence out of the fleet you already have. The easiest submarine to build is the one you already own, if you can return it to sea faster. In that sense, Idaho is not just another hull, it's part of a wider attempt to increase effective fleet size without necessarily increasing the number of submarines in the water overnight. And in a deterrence game, effective fleet size, the number of deployable ready boats, matters more than the number of hulls on paper. There's also a geographic layer to this story. Groton, Connecticut is not just a shipyard town, it's a node in the American undersea ecosystem. Each delivery reinforces the workforce, the supplier network, the engineering cadence, and the institutional memory that makes future deliveries possible. Lose that rhythm, and you don't just delay one submarine, you erode the capacity to build the next 10. And if you're thinking strategically, you should ask, in a long competition, what matters more, one platform's specifications or the nation's ability to keep producing and sustaining platforms over decades? So, when Idaho joins the fleet this spring, it will enter a world where the ocean is becoming more transparent in some ways and more deceptive in others. Sensors improve, data fusion accelerates, unmanned systems proliferate, and yet the undersea domain remains the place where uncertainty is still weaponized. That is the paradox of submarines. They are expensive, complex, and slow to build, but they generate outsized strategic effects precisely because they are hard to find and hard to counter. The mere possibility of a Virginia-class submarine in an area can change an adversary's behavior, reroute ships, slow operations, force escorts, restrict submarine movements, divert air patrols, and consume attention. And that's the final point. The delivery of the future USS Idaho is not the climax of a story, it's the continuation of a long, grinding narrative about maintaining undersea dominance in an era of renewed great power competition. It is a reminder that maritime superiority isn't declared. It's assembled, bolt by bolt, test by test, crew by crew. The real question, then, isn't whether Idaho will be capable. It will be. The real question is whether deliveries like Idaho, combined with smarter maintenance and sustained industrial capacity, will be enough to keep the U.S. undersea fleet not just advanced, but present. Because in the end, presence is what turns capability into power.